uh, we work transparently. And I assume that what we're going to say is maybe important and inspiring, and therefore we should sh share that with the world. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. So how are, how are things going with you? <clears throat> Good. Just um, uh, gear gearing up for the week, um, getting some things organized and taking care of myself. Um, what about you? Pretty good. Uh, that time was a kind of a fiasco because of the rain, but we're continually working on a CD Go Home here. We're not done yet. Uh, we're actually doing a design sprint later today to get some of the build procedures uh, just really nailed. Because it's really about <clears throat> a lot of it is that the procedures, they're very, very important. Like a lot of people think that, oh, you just build it, but no, you. It really, really matters quite a bit <clears throat> whether you're doing it effectively or not. That's that's kind of the difference between uh, a revenue model that works and doesn't. You know. So, other than that, we've got just been talking all day and spending a bit of time on the OSC apprenticeship. There's a bunch of people applying, and it's really good. Like some man just got got done with talking to a guy from Peru, and they're, they're saying the. It's like, you know, when I called it out, hey, hey, world changers, let's get together and change this world through open collaboration. And I feel like that message has resonated with some people and they're coming through the woodwork. So, so far we've got actually people, like like four people that are signed up, um, just continuing to to um, interview people and stuff. So it's looking really good. So I'm very optimistic about it because... Um, yeah, that... Um, that uh that post that I did, it got like almost 200 views and 39 shares. Oh, the, the one that you did? Yeah. Wow. That was good. Uh, that was pretty good. 186 likes, 27 comments, 39 shares. And people were saying they were going to... Wow. I, there were people on there saying they Send were going to... Sorry, can you paste it in again? Paste what in? Uh, the link to, to that one? Uh, was that on your, your... What media was that? Was it Facebook or...? Yeah, it was Facebook. Uh, in can, the, uh, can you paste that? I want to comment on it, maybe. Uh, let's see, you sent that. I can CC you. Yeah. It's in the Solar yeah. Punk um, group. Should I be on that group? <clears throat> Solar Punk face Facebook group? Yeah. Oh, cool. Here, I'll... Okay, I'm joining. Um, Man, shoot. I just CC'd oh, you cool. on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see it? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, man. Holy cow, that is really good. 13.1k um, members, public group. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, it's your tribe for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Miguel, do I know any of the people there? I know Pavel Lugovsky. Yeah. I Very think nice. he said he's he's trying to get in. Depending on... He was the one that said he's for sure playing. Yeah, he, he says he is. I should reach out to him. Very nice. Um, never met Pavo. Um, I know he's a, he's on one of our other groups too. Yeah. Okay. But let's. Uh, yeah. We'll so the other opportunity that came up was, I shared it with a um, an aid org like a. Think of it as like a, not a Peace Corps, but like a, like a disaster response, uh, multinational aid organization, and they were like, "This is really cool. I have a ton of farmers that, you know, a farmer network that mm -hmm. we could talk to," mm -hmm. and I just wasn't sure if like, he gave me the name, his name, and he wanted to be CC'd, and it, you know, um, he like farmers and the tractors thing and so I would guess I was trying to figure out if should I just introduce you or is that something that's like a distraction no do introduce me I mean we're definitely the more uh, I'm actively communicating with a lot of people on it so uh, no I don't mind that that would help I think 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, how about this? So one of the guys, uh, one of the guys that's that's going to be in the program. He he studied. He was a student of Chick Shant Mihai. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. The guy who. It sounds from flow and superfluidity. This is like so cool because we're saying like what's happening here is some of the people that are coming through. It's like so diverse skill sets and pretty powerful people that uh, just just real diverse diverse crew and and generals a bunch of generals and kind of diverse skilled guys so it's like wow cool <laughs> we'll have uh chick shen mihai post on his facebook and get all the chick shen mihai yeah uh, he's um he's a seminal figure behind um the concept of flow he he wrote the book i think i know who you're talking about i yeah. just don't know if i knew what it, his um uh if I think I know what you're talking about, uh, it's just I don't know how to say his name. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah, I know that's the guy. About. He wrote. Okay. That's well, the guy. interestingly enough, I've been talking to this guy and his team. Jamie Wheel. Oh. And he oh. has the Flow yeah. Genome yeah. Project. Okay. The Flow Genome. Tell yeah. Me. So I told. So basically, he has this, like, what I want to do is, he, he's basically, like, biohacking. Mm -hmm. Like, and he's, and he's got the narrative for, like, the people's head. Like, he's got, like, how do we make sense of this world that doesn't make sense anymore? Yeah. Um, and then you've got what you're doing, and then, like, all the region agriculture stuff. Yeah. Um, which I've been consolidating. So. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I, I sent him the video, they said it was really cool, and, uh, I, um, I'm gonna see if anything, you know, maybe, maybe we could combine some things, you know, so, is that, would you yeah. be open to something oh, like yeah. that? Oh, yeah, absolutely, okay. this is about all different sides, interdisciplinary approach, multicultural, interdisciplinary secular apolitical approach that includes everybody <laughs> yeah our religion is open source collaborative development awesome so you're just kind of like you're you're um well speaking of collaborative development um uh, we can with the course uh, yeah. i'm excited that you're going to be coming I'm excited. This is good to connect to the local local thing. So I'm glad you're there and talking about social enterprise at UMKC. Yeah. Yeah. So we can when we get closer, we can talk more. But you know, we can either there's a practicum part, mm -hmm. and this is you'll you'll be speaking under the like okay, we're actually gonna d actually do shit <laughs> um, yeah. in the part of the course rather than talking about theory. So right. we could. Um, we could get a feel for like, I might have to pe have people like sign waivers or something mm -hmm. if we're going to have them build a house, but I'm down to do that. Or we could have them do, um, you know, uh, some other project. Isn't What's the timeline? Cause, cause to build a house in a very short period, the, the back end of that is intensive. That takes a lot of work to execute. So that needs a person that can manage that. It could be me. It could uh, right now. It could be me, or that's pretty much in house because nobody knows how to do this yet. Um, I can't train you that fast on it. You'd have to build it yourself first. Um, but I'm open to the possibility of a real build if we find an actual site and real deal, because we're planning to do two more. Uh, July, August, we're going to build two more houses. So now July is a uh, July, August. And and what what's the schedule for your class? When does it end? It's it ends sort of at the end of July. It's from it's from June to the end of July, or where when is it? Yeah, mm -hmm. it ends like July 29th. Oh, so that's very rather short. Yeah, how many people do you yes. have in the class? It's eight weeks, mm -hmm. uh, and right, uh, yeah, it ends the last is july 30th right now there's probably max going to be 20 people yeah 
Yeah. As far as the, the swarm build, the numbers that we're talking about would be 20 people for one, 24 people for one week for five days. So, I mean, that's I'm not sure if that's how uh, that is for the students. Now, if we can find other people as well that are interested, that would be a way to execute it. So this is quite yeah. hairy ambitious, but we could try that. What would be like some scale down, like one day oh, yeah, we could do thing. a smaller thing. We could do a smaller thing and we could do um, a 256 square square foot version of it a micro house effectively a 256 16 by 16 or or something like that <coughs> micro house uh, could be a model for uh, <coughs> uh, someone who lives that lifestyle <laughs> yeah either an um, elite or a person under the bridge how long would that take a day could do a day one day yeah I like that, like a one day thing. Yeah, um, we could, just, we could, yeah, yeah. Um, we don't have but a we should, we should, we should actually those, come up with a bunch of different ideas and then figure out what, what sticks. I mean, I could, the, the class is two times a week um, mm -hmm. and the practicum is actually four weeks. Mm -hmm. So I, the way I designed it, it's theory is two weeks fundamentals is two weeks and practicum is four weeks hmm. yeah so it could be something that can you actually do a practicum where the four weeks are this micro house or yeah that's not uh meaning like the, so the class how that already is sufficient to do the actual thing and work some part-time you know there's a build there's revenue model development so this is about social enterprise so there's revenue models uh developing that uh, uh an operations plan for what what this would look like uh, do you do you think there would be somebody or it's is it practical to do a real a house that's 256 square feet and it's actually like code approved legal somewhere for a real client or just some demo that you can actually disassemble later because we can potentially think of something like this is a house we build, we assemble it, and then we bring it back, <laughs> bring it back to us as one of our uh, one of our cabins that we use here. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. An interesting concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so it could be it could be some kind of a, a scaled down partial build that still gets people feel like wow I built this this is pretty amazing. It doesn't have to be necessarily the full deal. I think that's good. And and how many people could it would be one person for one house, or do you need you still need to swarm it? We want to swarm it because that's part of the build experience. It's part of the yeah. the deployment model where you see that it's educational and fun, and you don't have to sweat as much. There's a there's a whole experience to that to the group. Okay. Um, well. I kind of want to, the way I'm thinking about it right now is that the practicum could be, oops, uh, mm -hmm. any number of projects to choose from, mm -hmm. and it could be like one of them. Mm -hmm. And so, um, mm -hmm. so open source ecology. Um, so how many people would you want to do, like, minimum on the, the small well, house? Yeah, still, still 24, because that means you'd see the, the whole class, because you'll see just the velocity, which is an encouraging thing psychologically. It's, a, it's an experience that the more people you have, you'll appreciate, one, how you can parallel test is learning about parallel design. And just the fact that you, you get so much done is a really encouraging thing that gets the ma maximum impact. Because if you, you know, you're working hard on something, it's like you don't see it, see some tangible thing, it's not as encouraging. And would you be able to, you would be on site? Uh, if this happens, then, then I would have to do it because I don't know of anyone else that can right now. Yeah. We're going to have, at that time, by that time we will have started the July 1st apprenticeship but we're not gonna have people that can replicate this until six months yeah so that's that was the goal for the end of the apprenticeship that my peoples are gonna be actually able to run this uh, through 
there's different tracks. One is the basic, you're just a builder, but if you're into organization and management, you have the capacity to learn how to run a crew. And that's that's the goal for at least some people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I'm trying to figure out is, that's the whole class. Um, yeah. It could be it could be even like a whole class for four hours because four hours is like an intense sprint, and that's probably what you want might want to do anyway because people get. Why tired. don't you just have us come like help you whatever you're doing instead of like. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you do that? I mean, in, instead of like cool. um, us doing our own project. Yep. I mean, I could see that being advantageous. I mean, we have four weeks, so cur currently it's. It's Tuesdays Perfect. and Thursdays from six to four, six to eight forty. Six p.m. So that, to eight forty p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So there's that constraint. Uh, it like would. So are, do we have a limit of just six to eight forty, or can you invite people? You know, come in a little early, and we'll do four hours or, or three hours. Yeah, I can. I can invite them. I can't sort of require yeah. them, but. Um, okay. Yeah, because I mean, you want to make sure that you get a good swarm of people. Otherwise, it'll be like, uh, if you don't see the progress happening or like nobody shows up, like my issue the other day, then it's no fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I wonder yeah, if, yeah, if we spent. What if we spent two weeks with you? Uh, and that's. We we dedicated like. You know, four classes to something. Yeah. You, you're and then I did another. Out actually, so physically on site here, or I don't know. Um, we have to figure it out. Um, yeah. So it's yeah. pretty far to ask people to drive and yeah. gas and all that. So. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'll see if I can find a site nearby here. But you have your whole e farm there. You know. Yeah. What what. What devices do you need to on site? You need a three D printer. What devices to? What do you mean to to do what to build a house? Yeah. Uh, right now it's just a stick frame construction, light frame construction. We don't need any of the machines that we have. Um, we don't need it. like if you do it like a temporary foundation. It's just car primarily just screwing things together and cutting things. We can have a thing where it'll be interesting to have like a tr almost a traveling model where it's all pre basically the kit. Ooh, developing a kit. Let's develop a kit, a pro productize a kit, something like that. Yeah, that's a good idea. That you don't have to cut anything; it's all pre-cut, and then you just assemble. It'd be like a life-size I IKEA assembly deal. So yeah. the yeah. kit is a, a micro house kit. Yeah. Yeah. Now, once again, it's, uh, if we do do that, someone's got to design it too. Like, we don't have a particular design that's like that already. We, there's just the practical challenges are the logistics and organizing to make sure that happens. Yeah. Uh, so, which means that's that... That's okay. Yeah. <clears throat> where, where then, like, the other part is, okay, so... Maybe just come in and participate in some kind of a smaller build, say on site, you know, just just get a feel for the tangible reality of it, and then just spend the time. Uh, let's develop the, the revenue model or enterprise model around it, or some kind of a social business model that comes with that. Like say, okay, we're deploying low cost micro houses for homeless people, or uh, we've that got a kid product that's sold on eBay or whatever. I don't know. That sounds good. I like that. Um, yeah. So just physical reality I, I can, track plus business model. And that will play into all the other things that I'm doing and teaching them about. So it should be something that you can use. Yeah. 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 And, and for some people, it might be like, oh, wow, I really like that because I want to live in a 256 square foot micro house. Um, maybe that's enough for a person, for, for a single person. I mean, that's, that's a fine house, a 256. Once you have a family, that's not big enough. But. Yeah. For a studio, studio apartment, that's plenty. Mm. Yeah, actually, I was thinking about you earlier because mm. Kansas City just got a grant of $8.3 million to, for homeless. Yeah. yeah and I was yeah. thinking, man, I wonder if, uh, 
who's uh what if you guys work on that integrate that so say okay this is the requirements from the city these are let's go through the requirements and see if we could we could uh rework our model to fit that because ours is a highly construction set approach we, we can probably make it work so maybe maybe like frame that with with this contest in mind and get money for yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, Rosie. Sorry, my dog yeah. is uh. You ate. You got this bone good. <laughs> she uh. She, I gave her a new bone and she's uh. You want to meet her? Yeah. Yeah. Say hi. Say hi to Marsh. Oh, that's a big dog. Okay, I thought it was a little puppy dog, little lap dog. Okay. Yeah, she's only 45 pounds. Okay. <laughs> she's a sweetheart. Hey, Rosie. Um, yeah. So, um, so that helps me. So maybe like a one, one or one day, whenever you come, we'll arrange it, you know, yeah. that same time and we'll kind of go deep and then, yeah. um, Right. And uh, what I could see definitely, like if we if we can have a date, you can say, OK, it's X, X many people are showing up, then we'll, we can prepare an event where we build one of the, like a cabin cabin structure here using the techniques Th that will be totally appropriate because, yeah, we're doing that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And then, awesome. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and then. Um, um, well, I'm I'm still also interested in the apprenticeship. Yeah, absolutely, and I, yeah. So I was going to ask you. So what what are your thoughts about it in terms of how you can meet your goals of what? So your str strong point appears to be organization and enterprise development. That's your world. Uh, here we're talking about a world where you enter into practical design and build skills. Um, so tell me. I mean, tell me what are you, what what are your thoughts are on that? I mean, I sort of. The the good news is that I've been flagging a banner called Regeneration, which yeah. your stuff fits perfectly in. Yeah. So you got me now as your champion talking to Flow Genome Project in the city, and you've got Bob, you know Bob Berkabile, and so I see, um, like, you know, um, I think that there's some grants that I could help find and apply for. I think there's. You know, part of the reason why I wanted to kind of, even if it's zooming with different people on the team, to kind of get a sense of, you know, uh, the building of the infrastructure of the. Obviously, we were, we started gambling on, you know, models, revenue models, uh, and we can, I can help strategize and like set, you know, medium long term goals around that and mm -hmm, drive mm -hmm, the team mm -hmm. around like, Okay, how do I? What do I need to do uh, around that? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So, like the dashboard of metrics, and um, I uh, uh, what else? Um, I, yeah, the the collaborative and the partners, I think, is a thing. Um, especially, I think that one thing I wanted to immediately. The, even if it's with Bristol or somebody, but I think that we could get in summer a lot of video footage, like turn that into a um, kind of like a Skillshare uh, alongside other videos that you know, like I see yeah. you know, some of the things I'm, some of the things I'm doing will generate some media, and I can, you know, if we kind of marry some of the things we're doing. Uh, you know, uh, under the regeneration banner, then we yeah, can of course. Get, uh, Re regenerative development at scale. Yeah. So, um, my thing is that I, I've, I've got to figure out a way to. Um, well, I want to come up to see the property and understand also like how big is the property? What's the infrastructure on it? You know, mm -hmm. what's the town like nearby? Like. Could it be a major demonstration site for um, for this kind of work, including regenerative agriculture, or is it, you know, what type of capital does it need? Um, 
what are the adjacent properties available? What's the combination capacity? What's the vibe like? Is it, you know, techie Noma, or could it have like a, you know, different types of people? You know what I mean? That could come. Um, and um, you know, there's all kinds of stuff on that. But um, yeah. Um. So, so Jeff is arriving on site. So here, myself and my partner, Katarina, are the full-time people on site. Jeff is arriving as our third person. Once we get the apprentices, they're sticking around. Some of them are likely to be staying afterwards. So we're, we're going from three people uh, as a community to probably uh, six or eight by the end of the year. But what you're seeing is here is something, a project that's been like a lot, you know, a lot of people coming and going. Right now is the first time we're actually building the the site to permanent people uh, with somewhat like an enterprise incubator where okay now out of the workshop you can be producing printer kits tractors or house kits or uh, if you if we're on site here we go out to to clients to build houses or such like, such but uh, it's kind of like um, it's it's in the making it's like a rocket ship takes off for the moon and all the debris scattered around it's a workshop and you know equipment graveyard and yep. old work old workshop there's the hab lab facility there's a nice cd co home and then a second one that we're just building right now so it's a it's like all in the making and it's the first time i must say like just to think about this mentality here so we had the mud you know i lived in a mud hut in there for a few years now is the first time where it's like we got a whole bunch of arbor vitae to actually plant it up and make it look this is nice before i never care about that because my budget is going to buying steel and making machines so that's kind of where we are in a nutshell. <laughs> and as what? I said, we, we're not funded. We're, we're not like foundation suckling off a corporate teeth somewhere. We're, we're bootstrap program, programmatically funded right now by running workshops or selling the 3D printers or brick presses. Yeah. Yeah. And are, do you have that role organized? Like what you're selling, the type of people you're selling to, no, the don't. percentage of your website. revenue? And that's all you have. So you, you go to opensourceecology.org and that's all we have. We don't have an infrastructure for like a storefront. It's like there's sale, um, products. This is what we got, just very simple. We can use marketing infrastructure, sales infrastructure, which we don't have. Uh, I mean, I'm open to like, for example, grant writing. Like, there's a lot of money we can pull in, but we, that's not just not the route we took because of limited resources to date. Yeah. But there's, of course, you can pull... Well, like, like even just identifying here's a bunch of low hanging fruit. Like, I just got a check the other day from Facebook donations from their employees, stuff like that. So it's probably like a bunch of stuff we could set up that could be in the background. Um, but we don't have that organized. We're, we're like, we're, we're just uh, getting into the enterprise development, just forming a solid organization. So and uh, that's where is that mostly you, or is that? Katarina or Jeff or it's is me at all like me is on on the organizational development part and big, big level strategy Jeff is pretty much running the site and workshop Katarina is open building Institute stuff but she's somewhat on sabbatical still she's still recovering uh, from that she's got some health issues um, so she's not involved as much as I would like definitely but now with the apprenticeship this is the the kind of vulnerability of calling out okay people uh, you know, we don't have it yet, but let's co-create it kind of deal. So it comes out of a meditative state and and it's implemented in, according to the collaborative development thing that I preach. And, and so it's in that, that sense. Um, so that's, that's kind of uh, where we're at on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's a lot to do. Um, yeah, so. there's plenty of stuff to do. And, and uh, you know, the, the thing that's that I think is a real boon right now with the CD go home as a, as a real revenue model. Like I think that we can definitely, uh, just like with the apprentices, we can pretty much say, okay, people come on over and actually people stick around and end up making, uh, making it work, uh, through collaborative enterprise because the revenue model works. Uh, yeah. It's like we're calling out for nothing short of distributed market substitution, which is okay. We, we develop all the assets around the CD go home, including an online designer that turns any person into a designer of their dream home that can be built at the lowest cost possible, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Are quite ambitious and all that. And 
but we need to execute and starting with just uh, there's clients and building homes for now and and evolving everything as housing 2.0 with a full digital model just full open source documentation of the product and the enterprise so so that that transparency is absolutely uh, critical uh, just a collaborative open economic development that's non-negotiable that's that's what's going to change the world turn a turn an economy from proprietary to collaborative and that's, Who, that's the big who's like the, that most uh, people don't recognize the, today who's the type of people that are buying oh sorry you, i'm not hearing you you cut out uh what happened oh can you hear me now anything happened uh can't hear can you hear me uh maybe try refreshing Um, uh, who, um, who is, uh, I'm buying the home? not hearing you, not hearing you. Really? For some reason. Can you, you can hear me? Yeah. Hmm. What about now? Um, maybe try a different browser, like, um, What about now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Can't hear still for some reason. Wonder what that is. Um, let me go back to the other one. And no. Can you hear me now? No. Um, here, let me just go on my cell phone here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go on my cell phone. That typically... Typically works. about now you can hear me I'm still not hearing you and I'm on my cell phone it's something on your end uh, now now I can hear you here we go yeah you good Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, can you hear me? Me? Can't hear me. Weird. I just tried to, I can hear you. Can't. Hello. Can you hear Hello? me? Can you hear me yeah. now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, that works now. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, that that's weird. Um, so, but so the practical, there's a lot of stuff we can do. Uh, you can help with in terms of uh, development, enterprise-wise. Like, uh, we can, you know, I can think about if that's 
what the like if we say okay what is the first thing that we do right now we can kind of hack that now re <laughs> but regarding I wanted to ask you about the actual apprenticeship so what is I mean how much time do you have available to learn Yeah, yeah, I'm there. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Let's see, where... Sorry, which place are you on? Are you on the... I'll hang up on... Um, All right, Brian, can you hear me? Brian, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, so this is your cell? Yeah. Okay, so does that work Work for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I would ask... Yeah, it just seemed like it really messed up. Yeah, I don't know what messed up. So let's continue on the cell. So I was going to ask, uh, there's a lot of stuff we can do on uh, enterprise development. With respect to the, the apprenticeship, uh, I mean, what's your availability in terms of your time because uh, we can teach you a lot about the practical design and build skills. The, the schedule works Monday through Thursday here. We basically do the design session. I'm going to be teaching at 8 a.m. for one hour and then we do like two or three hours of actual design practice where we put all of that into into real designs like okay here we learn about a 3D printer or tractor or basic element design. Here's how you design a wheel or a shaft and things like that. And we just actually continue to either working on existing machines or just designing stuff from scratch. But you'll get ample practice in the basic FreeCAD workflow. Then in the afternoon, we actually build the things that we design. So this is complete reification of it. It's not just some weird shit that you're just designing for nothing. It's stuff that works and is going to be prototyped. Uh, and improved over time with intent of productization. So that's the schedule for Monday through Thursday. And then, uh, so all afternoon, like 12, or I think like one to five, I think there's a one hour lunch, but one to five, we're building stuff and repeat, rinse and repeat Monday through Thursday. Uh, on Fridays, we focus more on uh, infrastructure work. So if we got to build, like say the, the new new road or a new new cabin or the workshop made of CEBs or another machine like a tractor, we do that, um, well, uh, more directly related to the infrastructure aspects of actually building up infrastructure. And then Saturdays are where we, 
work on collaborative design protocols, collaborative development protocols of all kinds, including starting incentive challenges or hackathons, uh, publishing videos for rapid learning, so forth. And then evening, of course, is the, the t twice a week is the, the enterprise seminar for three hours. We go at it like uh, s like six to nine or five, I think six to nine is the schedule, or 5.30 to 8.30. Five thirty to eight thirty. Uh, but the most relevant. Let me, let me repeat back so I make sure I understand yeah. it. So eight to eight to noon is design. Yep. Uh, one to five is building. Yep, building things, and that's the relevant stuff to you. Like if you want to pick up hands-on skills, then you you got the building, but you want to do the design part, so you actually know uh, when you build stuff, you know how it's designed. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, there's the Summer of Extreme Design Build. The September 1 starts the two-week crash course on the CD Go Home. Right. And you're going to build one. Yep. Complete from start to finish. Um, that's what I was trying to figure out. Hey, I'm done. I just had to take my dog out. So. Mm -hmm. um, what I got to figure out is... Uh, I mean, what I'm afraid about is, like, is there a part-time version of this? Yeah, so so the, the way it's, um, right, the, the time constraints are, are for real. I mean, I understand this is, like, this is supposed to be full-time. The thing is, with the design build parts, we're going to be just basically hashing it over and over again on different aspects of the of the build so if you want if you want to le learn the design if you show up on any day you would be learning here's the design lesson and we actually implement it in practice so you can get some practice every day uh, if you make it like one day versus another I don't think it really matters because we're like going at it intensely and continuously on different things so you can select oh, okay I'm gonna show up uh, like a day or two this week uh, on this particular project, the I think the value there could be that you're you are getting the hands-on practice in both both ways. There's the design and build. Uh, if you don't complete it, you will still be getting hands hands-on on chunks. Like say say you were building uh, some say a new printer, 3D printer over maybe a few days or something. Um, if you get one day of it, that would be valuable. If you get the full full deal you'll see the finished product but during each step it's it's kind of fractal in a sense that you will get tangible design build skills every day and it builds towards like this more like the mastery uh, level but if you do only so much of it the good thing is that it's it's like the process is the same once you learn the design you can learn the design uh, as far as how you use the tools and the, the kind of collaborative design process you can learn it through any of the sessions, so it's somewhat fractal in design. If yeah. if you talk about oh now after this I want to be able to produce a tractor, produce a three D printer, produce a house like as a business, then you have to be there for the whole thing because you got to know how to do the thing from beginning to end. But if you want you want to immersion in some of the aspects of it, then then you can do do parts of it. Now if you want just parts so of I it, do yeah. Parts of it until I'm like I want to know how to do this, one, you know, and then yeah. I can make it my project. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are you thinking that you might have availability? Like it will be like only like one. I mean, what what do you think your availability would be like? Like a day a week, or a couple of days, or just like a half a day every week, or like what, what yeah, would it I'm be? Yeah, I'm thinking about doing a bunch of half a days. You know, a bunch of half a days. Mm -hmm. Like make sure to do at least at least one design and one build, but maybe. You know, I can fit in two of each, you know? Mm hmm So um, do like two half days every week? Yeah. Would you be on site for the, the design part, or would you like c come in, there's lunch, and you're driving over to our, our place at lunch? Because <laughs> um, you're literally an hour and six minutes away, so when we finish the design session, that's lunchtime, and we start at one. Yeah, I would, I would be there by one. Yeah. Or maybe I show up for lunch or something. Yeah. Um, I, I'll, I'll, uh, let me think about this. This is, I was worried you weren't going to let me do a part-time version because I know you need to be full-time and I really want to do it and I think that 
um, the other stuff I would be doing is, you know, I could be doing all kinds of stuff to help on the enterprise stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I have a small, we have a small nonprofit, and, you know, we could do collaborative grants together. Yeah. So yeah. That would be helpful, I think. Yeah. Yep. Um, and uh, there's a thing also called AmeriCorps Visa. Yeah, and AmeriCorps Visa. For fifteen dollars, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, we we can get. Um, I'm sorry, not fifteen. Fifteen thousand uh, dollars. You can get ten AmeriCorps Visa, like year long students, like. Like a gap year kind of thing. Oh man, um, so the students would be would be practicing for the work of open source ecology, or are they like, oh, I want to do some other project? Like, how do you see that? Yeah, they'd be like your employees. Okay. It's kind of like city year, you know. Like. Yeah, that's actually that topic actually came up some time ago, and, and that would be a that could be a gold mine there in terms of people who we get into the program. By all means, yeah. we never, I mean, we never follow up because once again, this is you got to do some legwork there. Um, yeah, I'm working on a, I'm working on a, um, doing that for just applying so I can get ten people to try it, and maybe we put some of them off with you yeah. if they're interested to um, try it out. You know, we can just expand it. Yeah, That's absolutely. Thing that I want to, I'm trying to get, you know, as a deep one. Yeah. We've got four people signed up already, four or five right now, actually, I'm actively interviewing and I just like accepted it, like three people today, so we've got like five, five or six already for, um, for July the 1st, and I'm interviewing a bunch more. So it's coming along, it's great, I, I mean, I'm really encouraged by the kind of people that step forward, that's the good part. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. We got 30 acres. Wow. Yep. That's cool. Well, um, you know, keep me posted on any, like, sort of adjacent thing. Because I was, there was a guy that I met who is, like, in the market for a farm. And uh-huh. he was very collaborative. Yeah, that, that one place with um, whatever it was it like eighty acres that I mentioned to you for like two fifty k or so. That yeah, that one is I can tell you right now is for sale right now. Beyond that, yeah, we'll keep you in mind, keep okay. you posted. Yeah. Um. So I think I still need to write the. I started on the CAD. I'm maybe like halfway through. I I had I got uh, interrupted. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then um, also write the page. Yeah, I mean, uh, kind of get clarity on what what would be your ideal situation here, and then see uh, if we can uh, accommodate that, which I'm sh- yeah. sure we could, and then work out some kind of an agreement of what we're you know, what we're working together on, because that I mean there's just a lot of stuff. I think you might want to tell me what maybe maybe that note of clarity. Would be a good place. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's awesome, man. Well, I'm yeah. uh, I'm very pumped about this. Yeah. No, I'd love to have you. Uh, wh- wh- on your website, you're like standing on the side of your hands. Are you like uh, pretty athletic too, like that, or how'd you do that? Yeah, it's just a it's a yoga pose. Oh, nice. Uh, it's called you- 
Oh yeah, so you, you do you do yoga? Yeah. Nice. Um Yeah. Uh, looks looks pretty cool on the website to show that you're you know a little diversity <laughs> there. Yeah. You know, uh, as far as um, for September, yeah, I, I say at the top of my head, the big goal is you know media crew. Okay. To be there and capture everything. Yeah. Um, and then some grants, uh, including AmeriCorps visa, and then just maybe some like enterprise. Diligence. So, like, me just kind of asking a bunch of questions and seeing where you're at, and then yeah, kind of supporting the sophistication of, you know, mm -hmm. you know, because you're you're doing everything, you know, right? So, right. Um, we need some uh, support. Yep. I was thinking the other thing is like if you talk about grants, grants for here's a scholarship for a person for the apprenticeship, so qualified people who'd want to uh, say build a CD eco home, build an eco home, um, grants for people to go through the program, like that means local local guys. So I'm trying to get this one guy here from Maysville who's a really really good guy. Uh, into the program, but and and that is bridging the gap, br bridging the cultural gap, because these are you know like local kids who are not connected to the much greater global picture of things, and that could definitely bridge some of the gap, cultural gap issues that we're facing right now, right? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I'm basically looking at it, it's like okay. W uh, you know, we charge for our stuff, but it's like, I want this to succeed. I want to, I see this as an opportunity to take a local kid and, and it's like paid apprenticeship. Like, well, we don't do that, but if this is going to have a potential to like, if he succeeds, and I was actually thinking of getting him in for like a two year thing where he would just stick with us for a long time until he, he knows how to build tractors and brick presses and houses. And then if we can teach one person like that, we can make a global difference of change because that means we've developed a model to teach more people um, and take them out of the kind of like the blue white collar divide. Yep. Mm -hmm. um. So for that reason, it's like, yeah, um, he does some work for us here right now, but it's like, I mean, right now, I've, I, th I would predict that the way things are come like, you know, 10 years from now he's going to be like a diesel mechanic somewhere which is not exactly a, a l gr l growing grow for life opportunity <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that was the other thing that we talked about was getting your apprenticeship uh, registered yeah with the local community college right. so right. that people maybe it, it like looks a little bit different in that way but it allows people to kind of get Credit. Absolutely. I mean, I, uh, I mean, if you can help us on that, that would be, that would be awesome. I mean, we're willing to, uh, to make that work. I mean, if it's something that people can be, you know, at least for some publicity, people get can, can uh, find out about this, or uh, another college could endorse it, or uh, potentially in the future even offer it. I mean that to me the gold mine would be like okay so this community college they're visionary enough to say that oh we should actually be teaching this at our place why don't we teach one of our instructors to do, to build the CD go home or provide this this opportunity uh, so yeah. that we we replicate it it's all open enterprise yeah mm-hmm what um what uh I gotta get going in a couple of minutes though. We're we're running running the design sprint at four p.m. Okay. Uh, what's your budget look like? Like, is it super bootstrapped or? It's hundred percent bootstrapped. You? I mean, we're no, it's all programmatic. So so we're you know we're getting people into the apprenticeship program. 
we're buying materials and building infrastructure with it. You know, right. stuff like stuff like that. So we're we're not in any way top down funded. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like for the guy to offer, for us to offer the say a paid internship, um, you know, that's kind of a different way than we typically go. But I think we're, you know, we're basically cross subsidizing. You know, some person that pays for the apprenticeship, then we pay that money for this person uh, to to be able to afford this person. You know. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, I mean, it, I'm I'm open to to whatever works. I mean, it depends what value you're providing and what what value we're providing to you. And and we've talked about a lot of ideas, but we have to kind of pin it down more to to what what the value exchange would be. But I mean, of course, I'm open to all kinds of thing that where you get exactly what you need and we get exactly what we need, and there should be a lot of room for that. Yeah. Well, uh, let me, I'll work on my assignment and I will uh, get back to you and we'll talk again. When do you think the next time a bill will be this week? Um, or is it probably like, uh, like Wednesday or so, Wednesday. Uh, I was just waiting for the weather to clear up. But I can, I'll keep you informed on that when, when the next build time is. We don't have a specific day because I'm like really watching the weather. And so far it's been like raining all the time. So like, for example, thir- Wednesday looks rather clear and so does Monday, but we're not ready for tomorrow. Wednesday could be a p- potential thing, but this is Missouri weather. So otherwise Friday we should be, I'm pretty sure we'll go at it Friday. Wednesday or Friday are like our next big build days. Um, Something like that, but I'm I'm just really watching the weather because it's been so rainy, and yeah, right, yeah, that's yeah. That. And there's no inside; you can't do it inside. Uh, yeah, it's it's challenging, but hey, listen, I got to get going to this other one, so let, I'll keep you informed and let's follow up on on email. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, well, thanks so much, and yeah, we'll keep talking and see what we can do. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. Right, bye bye. Bye bye. Hey everybody, who is this? We got Logan, Eric, and me. Logan, hi. Uh, Eric, you finally showed up for the first time. You showed your face. That's great. Thank you. Now, Logan, I can't hear you if you're if you're trying to speak. Sorry, I um I unwittingly had my audio on mute. Can you hear me now? Okay. Well, I can hear you now. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, I I'm gonna record this if you guys don't mind, and because. Uh, after all, we do work in the public, and um, let's see, let's. Uh